In this lecture, you'll learn about the snap mirror engine, which is used for load sharing mirrors, snap mirror data protection mirrors, and also for Snapbot. I'll be going into each of those in more detail later, but in this lecture, I want you to learn about the common characteristics that are shared by all the features that use the snap mirror engine. The snap mirror engine is used to replicate the data in a source volume to a destination volume, and it can be in the same or a different cluster. It's used for load sharing mirrors, for data protection mirrors, and also for Snapbot. And when we use the snap mirror engine, it's the volume that is the unit of replication. Back in the old seven mode operating system, you could replicate either at the Q tree or the volume level, but in cluster mode, it's always at the volume level. Q tree replication is not supported. With snap mirror, the source volume is read write and the destination is always read only. We need to have just one writable copy of the data in order to keep the data consistent. If you replicated it to another location, and you were able to write to both different locations at the same time, then they would be different. So to have that just one single master copy of the data, that's going to be at the source side, which is read write, destination is read only. After an initial baseline transfer, only incremental changes are replicated from the source to the destination volumes. So this keeps things as efficient as possible. Deduplication and compression savings are replicated from the source to the destination volume. The data is not inflated or decompressed during the transfer. So you keep those storage efficiency savings on both sides. Source or destination volumes can be moved to another aggregate in their cluster without breaking replication relationships. So if you've already set up SnapMirror and then you move a source or a destination volume, SnapMirror is going to keep working the same as before. And auto grow is always enabled on snap mirror destination volumes because obviously the destination volume needs to have enough room for all of the data that is in the source volume well if you change the size of the source volume you make it bigger then that's going to be also carried over to the destination side as well if the destination side is running out of room to store the data that's being replicated Auto grow will automatically make the volume bigger as long as there's room in its aggregate. So let's look at load sharing mirrors first. Load sharing mirrors are mirror copies of FlexVol NAS volumes, which provide redundancy and load balancing. SAN protocols are not supported for load sharing mirrors. They provide load balancing for read traffic only. Write requests always go to the source volume to keep the data consistent. Load sharing mirrors are always in the same cluster as the source volume. So this is different than with our standard snap mirror and snap vault where you can replicate to a different cluster and you actually usually are replicating to a different cluster. With load sharing mirrors, it's always inside the same cluster. And load sharing mirrors are by far most commonly used to protect NAS SVM root volumes. Next up, we have snap mirror data protection, DP mirrors. And when we talk about snap mirror in general, we're talking about these DP mirrors. Snap mirror can replicate volumes within the same ONTAP cluster or to another NetApp storage system in a traditional data center or the cloud. So DP mirrors can be used to replicate within the same cluster, but by far more often the replication will be going from one cluster to another. And now with the NetApp data fabric, it's not just on tap to on tap replication you can do. You can actually replicate between different NetApp storage systems. To find out what is possible, check out the NetApp data fabric lecture way back in section two. The use cases for using DP mirrors. They can be used to replicate data between volumes in different clusters for disaster recovery. So you've got your data in your main site, you can replicate that data to a disaster recovery site, and if the main site goes down, you can fail over to the DR site. Intervention is required to fail over to the DR site. When you're using Metro Cluster, you can do it automatically. 
Another use case is to provide load balancing for read access across different sites. So let's say that you have got a site in New York and you've also got a site in London. Well, if New York is your main source site, you can replicate from there to London. And then if that data only requires read-only access, what you can do is you can have people that are closest to New York accessing it there and people that are closest to London accessing it there. So it gives you read-only load balancing and it gives you improved performance based on the location of your users. You can also use DP mirrors for data migration between clusters. So if you just want to move data from New York to London, you can use it for that. You can also use it to replicate data between SVMs, which are in the same cluster. And finally, you can use it to replicate data to a centralized tape backup location. So really anything where you need to move data around, SnapMirror DP mirrors can be used for that. So let's have a look at some of these use cases in a bit more detail. So first one, disaster recovery. This is the most common use case for SnapMirror. And again, if we're talking about SnapMirror in general, we're usually talking about these DP mirrors being used for disaster recovery. So you can see here, we've got a couple of primary sites in the example. This could be, say, New York and London, and we could replicate them to Sydney, for example, as a disaster recovery site. Next one we had was the data migration or read-only load balancing. So let's say that our source site here is in New York and maybe we've got other sites in London, in Sydney and in some other location where we can replicate the data to all of those. And we could also do staging to remote tape. So here we have got our main sites on the left and we're replicating volumes from them all into a centralized cluster, which is then being used to back up to tape. Okay, with our SnapMirror hardware costs, the source and destination systems do not need to use the same hardware. Actually, they don't even need to be using the same software, don't have to be on all on, on tap. You can use inexpensive SATA drives on the destination volume for cost savings if a performance hit is acceptable during a failover. So if you are using SnapMirror DP mirrors for your disaster recovery, you could have your more expensive drives in your main site, and then you can get some cost savings on your DR site by using less expensive hardware. Unlike load sharing mirrors, DP mirror copies are not automatically mounted into the namespace and implicitly accessed by clients. So your DP mirror copies can be mounted through a junction into the namespace by the administrator. So with your DP mirrors, if you do need to fail over to a DR site, you need to do additional work there because the DP mirrors, they just replicate the data across to the destination volume. They don't replicate all of your on-tap settings for example, your, your junctions, also your Windows shares, export policies, etc. So that all needs to be set up as well. I'll go into more detail about how this works with the load sharing mirrors and with the DP mirrors when we get to those specific lessons later in this section. So the main or most common functionality of DP mirrors is as a disaster recovery solution. The destination is read-only under normal conditions to maintain a single consistent copy of the data. But if the primary site is lost, you can fail over and make the destination volumes writable. Also, a flex clone copy can be taken on the destination to create a separate writable copy without disrupting snap mirror operations. So the first one there was we've got our main site. That is our read write copy of the volume. But if we lose the main site because of a flood or a fire or something like that, at that point, we can make the destination volume a writable copy and we fail over to the destination site. But also, if the main site is still up and we want a writable copy of a volume on the destination site, we can use Flex Clone to do that in a space efficient way. DP mirrors keep the source and destination volumes in the same state, the same data in both sides, with some lag as determined by your schedule. If data is corrupted in the source volume, then that corruption is going to be replicated over to the destination volume as well. 
So DP mirrors provide disaster recovery functionality, but they do not provide backup. If you have a problem in resource volume, then that problem is going to be replicated to the destination volume as well. You cannot roll back to an earlier version. So that is where Snap Vault comes in. Snap Vault is Data on Tap's long-term disk-to-disk backup solution. It has the same functionality as traditional tape backups, but it's much faster, much more convenient, and it requires less storage space. Data is replicated from source volume to a destination volume on a centralized backup cluster. And unlike DP mirrors, Snap Vault can retain multiple backups over a long time period. So Snap Mirror, DP Mirrors, and Snap Vault, they both work the same way. They both use the Snap Mirror engine. But the difference between the two is that with Snap Mirror, it just keeps a single copy on both sides, which it keeps in sync with each other. The destination volume can become writable if you need to fail over, but it does not keep copies going back in time for backup. With Snap Vault, it does keep the copies going back in time for backup, but with Snap Vault, it can't be made into a writable copy. So Snap Mirror is used for disaster recovery. Snap Vault is used for backup. With Snap Vault, data can be restored to the original source volume or to a different volume if you've lost the main site. The destination volume cannot be made writable, as I just said, so it's backup. It's not a DR solution, unlike Snap Mirror DP Mirrors. Separate flex clone copies can again, however, be made of the snapshot backups. Okay, so we've got Snap Mirror, we've got Snap Vault. I just explained the difference between the two. There's also unified replication supported as well. With unified replication, that provides disaster recovery and backup on the same destination volume. So with unified replication, it uses Snap Mirror and Snap Vault on the same destination volume. Combining DP Mirror and Snap Vault reduces the amount of secondary storage required and reduces network traffic. So if we've got one source volume, rather, rather than replicating it to one destination volume for Snap Mirror and to a different volume for Snap Vault, which would take twice the storage space and take up more network bandwidth as well, we just replicate it to one destination volume and that one destination volume can be used for both Snap Mirror and for Snap Vault. Okay, so let's summarize our load chaining mirrors, our data protection mirrors, and Snap Vault. So all three of them all use the Snap Mirror engine to replicate data between volumes. So under the hood, we're all working the same way. Load sharing mirrors are used for redundancy and load balancing within the same cluster only, always, and that's for small read-only volumes. For load sharing mirrors, no license is required. It's built into ONTAP. The main function of DP mirrors is as a disaster recovery solution between different clusters. They can also be used to move data between SVMs or clusters as well. And Snap Vault is a long-term disk-to-disk backup solution. For compatibility, the source and destination nodes can be different models of controller with all three of load sharing mirrors, DP mirrors, and Snap Vault. Data on tap seven mode volumes cannot be used in cluster data on tap systems and vice versa though. There is a workaround for this though, which is the seven mode transition tool, but that is not meant to be used as a permanent solution. So if you've got seven mode systems and you have got cluster mode systems, you can use the seven mode transition tool to migrate your data from seven mode to cluster mode systems, but that's designed to be a one-off thing, not something you're meant to be running long-term. I'll talk more about the seven mode transition tool when we get to the upgrade and migration section later in the course. Version flexible snap mirror. So with traditional snap mirror, the original snap mirror, which is type DP, the ONTAP version running on the destination volume must be the same version or up to two releases later than the one running on the source volume. And when I say type DP, this is when we do the actual configuration. So type DP can be used both for Snap Mirror and for Snap Vault as well, well originally. But now the current type that is used is type XDP, which stands for Extended Data Protection. And that is version flexible Snap Mirror. With version flexible Snap Mirror, that allows different versions to be run on the source and the destination. Now, originally, Type DP had 
better performance than type XDP. So type DP was the default for DP mirrors. However, that performance improvement is not really there anymore in the later versions of ONTAP. So from ONTAP 9.3, version flexible snap mirror is now the default. And really that's what you should always be using now. For licensing, a snap mirror license is required on both the source and destination clusters for your DP mirrors and for Snapbot. Snap mirror synchronous requires an additional capacity based license on the source cluster as well. And in later, well, in earlier on tap versions, you needed a snap mirror license for snap mirror and a snap vault license for snap vault. But in later versions, a snap vault license is not required if a snap mirror license is already installed. And finally, a special type of system that you can buy from NetApp is DPO. That stands for Data Protection Optimized Systems. A DPO license supports an increased number of volumes and peer relationships. And for some platforms, a snap mirror license is not required on resource if a DPO license is on the destination. So if you do have a centralized cluster that you're going to be using as the destination for snap mirror and snap vault, then buying that as a DPO system can be cost effective. Thanks for watching. If you want to get hands-on practice with NetApp storage for free on your laptop, then you can download my free ebook, which you can see above my head right now. Also check out my NetApp storage complete course, which will teach you everything you could possibly want to know about ONTAP. Thanks.